on the front of the Apollo Twin, you have, to the right, your headphone outputs. You guessed it, is to plug in your headphones. To the left, you have your guitar input. You can also plug in a bass, if that's how you roll. That's a high Z input, which means you do not need a DI to record a bass or a guitar with your Apollo Twin. Just plug it in. On the back, starting from the right, you have two combo jacks that let you connect either microphones or line inputs. Then you have a pair of monitor outputs because stereo is nice. That is where you're going to connect your speakers. The line outputs are a nice touch. You can use them for many things. For example, you could connect them to a headphone distribution box and feed the whole band with a mix. Or you could use them to do reamping tricks. Next. The square hole with the pretty logo above it there is the Thunderbolt port, which through a Thunderbolt cable will let you connect the Apollo Twin to your computer. Below is the power input. Don't forget to twist the connector to secure in place. Next to the power connector is the power switch, which is also related to power, hence the label power. I strongly recommend the on position. Lastly is the optical in connector. That will let you extend the input capabilities of the Apollo Twin by either two digital channels if you use it in SPDIF mode or eight digital channels if you use it in ADAT mode. And that's about it for your connectivity summary of the Apollo Twin.